I'm going to demonstrate how I make known bloody fingerprint depositions for testing purposes with Castlemeyer reagent. These are uh, tiles, like kitchen tile or actually I think they're floor tiles. They're brand new and I purchased them and cut the uh, cut them apart and they're, they're new and they're clean but I'm still giving them a once over with alcohol to clean them completely. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is get my blood sample which is uh, human blood that I just had drawn and this blood is only about two hours old or less than two hours and I will use the blood and a blotter let me position these here and I will dip my finger into the blood and then blot it slightly so that it's not completely running and then I will make successive depositions and um, I will. I know because they're side by side that they were um, done successively. And okay, there's the bloody fingerprint. And so I can get. Maybe I took off too much. There, I want to have some on it. And let's just go to the top one and just do a touch. Three, four, five, six. And let's do another series. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I can do one more. So I'll have three samples of successive blood prints. And now I'm on the bottom row. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I can leave them and we can see that the one in the middle appears to have a little bit more blood on it. And the one on the bottom, it uh, the blood is barely visible. But I'll, I'll be able to have these now for control samples. I know that they're blood and that they are uh, deposited successively. I'm now going to sample the sixth deposition of the fingerprint and uh, this is five and this is number six so what I will do of course is get my q-tip and I have applied the alcohol and I'm gonna go right through the middle where I know the stain is and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take a complete swabbing and destroy the area in other words, I am collecting the entire deposition, and this would destroy it if I wanted it for any other reason. But this will give me an idea of what the sixth deposition, how it will respond to phenolphthalein to prepare me for my um, other tests that I do. So I'm going to zoom back and show the test. I'm going to apply the phenolphthalein and wait just for a second and now I'm going to apply the hydrogen peroxide and I can see a positive reaction should be visible on the camera. That is a positive reaction. So that means that in the six step process where I made the finger deposition one, two, three, four, five, six, even in number six, 
I got a clear positive indication for blood. I'm now going to apply aqueous amido black which of course is amido black in a water uh, water base and the sample is uh, six finger bloody finger depositions and to apply the amido I'm just going to spray and let it run down so you can see I'm getting I'm getting a coloration reaction this is all the way from left to right even the area that I uh, removed most of what I thought was the fingerprint with the uh, phenolphthalein test is is still coming the residue is still um, reacting so I will have something there to test um, because this is tile and it's very uh, non-porous the um, amido is not going to probably require a rinse it's uh, running off very clearly so I'm just going to let this dry and then I will be able to test this with phenolphthalein to see what the results are. Okay I'm going to test this sample that was previously tested and came back positive and it was then sprayed with amido black and now I'm going to do a follow-up Castlemeyer and collect a sample to see if it will come back as a positive Castle-Meyer test after it was treated with amido black. So all I have to do now is there's the sample. I just have to apply the phenolphthalein. Okay, and wait for no response. I don't want any response here. And when I add the hydrogen peroxide, you should see a, an immediate pink coloration if it is a positive test. And you can see there is no immediate coloration like it did when I tested it before I sprayed it with Amido Black. This is more proof that the amido black reaction prevents the, 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 the amido black chemical application prevents the Castle-Meyer test from functioning. And this is giving me a false negative. I'm going to do still another test of uh, the, the blood sample. Now I know that this is human blood. I know it's human because it's my blood that was drawn. And the swab with alcohol, I'm going to collect a sample of the area. And in this collection process, it's very apparent that the blue is being transferred onto the q-tip and it gives the appearance that there is a very good sampling present. The next phase will be adding one drop of phenolphthalein. That is exactly one drop and just wait for a, any, any color change which is not supposed to happen of course and now I'm going to add the hydrogen peroxide and look for the immediate pink coloration. This is absolutely a negative Castlemeyer test on blood that I know tested originally positive with Castlemeyer. Again, the amido black process 
and the subsequent the Castle Meyer test was negative after the Amido Black process. So let me do still another sample where the reaction is much more intense. In other words, there's much more of a sample there. And I will begin with uh, the alcohol drop. So the Q-tip. And you can see that I'm going to take a very strong or very concentrated sample. So I will consume just about the entire fingerprint. And obviously if you were collecting at a scene you wouldn't want to do this and you might be tempted to only take a small sample thinking that that is enough to gain uh, a sample needed for the test. So here is, here is my sample, and it looks like it's a very uh, good amount. I will add the phenolphthalein, and with all this blood on here, you would expect to have a very strong and positive reaction. and there is no reaction.